working with your vehicle's electrical system, always disconnect the battery. Avoid short shorting any circuits or probing around wires. Failure to follow the safety precautions and all others could result in irreversible damage to your vehicle's electrical system. Failure to start fire and or personal in personal injury. Alrighty, here we have the tools required for this installation. Pretty much just a metal hanger to feed the wire. 3 8 ratchet, the 3 8 extension, wire stripper and a wire cutter. I I don't personally use that, but those are the tools. T25 Torx driver, T27 Torx socket 3 8 10 millimeter socket, 3 8 as well, some tape, and some sandpaper to lightly sand down the, the contact points. We'll talk about that later. Parts required are two T25 Torx screws, left and right fog lamp, fog lamps. ECS wiring harness or wiring harness of your choice, the Euro headlight switch, and your fog light inserts left and right. This is everything needed for the fog light installation kit. Under the dashboard, you'll see an OEM wiring harness that exits through a rubber grommet in the firewall. You want to thread your hanger through the rubber grommet and out to the engine bay. Right here, just lift this up. And there should be a rubber, rubber grommet right through here. I uh, unconveniently lost mine somewhere in the vehicle. Alrighty, step two, we're going to wrap the wire around the hanger. Um, you can go ahead and use a pair of pliers if you want to. But I just get it like so. The wire, uh, one end of the wire hanger. Get some tape. Alrighty, just like so. Alrighty, step three would be to pull the coat hanger back through the footwell, threading the, the wire through the firewall. You can either um, try to put the coat hanger right in here. There's an opening right down here. So if you can see it, there's a hole right there. You can either try to enter through there or go underneath the footwell and route the hanger and, and try to bring it out through here and then go ahead and tape it and then pull the coat hanger back through the footwell and the wire the wire should um, should, should thread thread through the through the firewall. Already, already hit him and routed it through the firewall. It's best if you have one extra person. It's a little bit easier just to get that coat hanger going. And then here we have it, our taped up. And then once you have that, just go ahead and pull it through. Thread the wire through the firewall. And then we'll continue on to the next step. Alrighty, next step is installing the Euro switch. You're going to want to go ahead and remove the OEM switch. To remove the OEM switch, first turn it into the off position. After turning the switch in the off position, push the button in gently and turn clockwise about 15 degrees. Oops. 
real simple it takes seconds if if that once it's done the switch will then release the, the switch will then release and you will be able to pull it out exercise caution pulling the switch out in order to keep the OEM wiring harness intact and not damaging it Next up, go ahead and disconnect the OEM harness from the switch. To do this, gently press the two outer pins that are holding the connector in place. While pushing the clips, gently pull on the switch, backing it away from the connector. I'm gonna go ahead and try to do this with one hand. And they're right there and right here. Push them in and pull, just like so. Comes apart very very easy very very easily next step would be to thread the wire up to the OEM headlight harness to do this you must first take off the plastic fuse cover under the headlight switch which is located right here just like that this cover comes off by a simple pull from the bottom up now take the end of the wire that you have threaded through the firewall and pull it up by the left side of the fuse box and up to the OEM harness. Step number four, pull the blue wire up through the headlight switch hole so you can insert it into the harness. Step five, on the sides of the wiring harness connector, you will see um, number labels. These labels mark the pin number for each slot. I don't know if you could see them. Alrighty, the pin number to activate the front fog lights is pin number eight. Your connector should look like this. If not, well then, you're shit out of luck. No, I'm just kidding. Can't really see it in the video, but as long as it says number eight, you should be fine. Once that's done, go ahead and reconnect the European switch to the OEM connector. For added security, before reinstalling the switch, you can use a zip tie to ensure the wire is snug against the harness so it doesn't have any playroom. Like so. And then I have another one a, a little bit um, up closer to the switch, right behind it. Alrighty, and then step number six, install the Euro switch. Um, to do that, basically repeat the steps. Hold it in the position it will sit in and gently push it in. I'm going to go ahead and re-uninstall re it, okay. Like so. Push and then just basically twist to the left and that's it. Upon reaching the proper position, the switch will snap into the dash. After securing the switch and routing the wire, the wire around the left side of the fuse box, you can go ahead and reinstall the, the plastic cover. The remainder of the wire inside the car, um, you can go ahead and make a neat roll, secure it with the zip tie and neatly tuck it away behind the plastic to the left of the dead pedal. It's right behind, right, just right behind here. Hold on, let me go ahead and get it. Like so, you can just go ahead and tuck it right, right here, just like that. I'll go ahead and fix it right now. That's just real quick presentation. Alrighty, the next step would be to the relay, relay mounting under the hood connections or under hood connections basically locate this metal clip on the driver side strut housing remove the uh, round clip by turning it counterclockwise um, watch out not to cut yourself I have cut myself I've done this installation four or five times so watch out once you've done that go ahead and install the relay uh, I'll go ahead and do that right now Just like so. Place it. Okay. Install the relay. Hmm. That should be it. 
Alrighty, next up is to remove the plastic cover that sits over the fuse box under the hood. The fuse box is located on the right, um, on the right side of the battery. There's going to be a small uh, pull back tab right here. Just go ahead and lift. I've already broken this back tab back here, so this just comes out very easily. It slips right off pretty much. The only thing holding it down is again this little tab right here. I don't know if you can see it. Okay, after taking the cover off, remove the nut that is holding down the red cable. This red cable. Use the 10, mil 10 millimeter socket and a 3 8 ratchet with a 3 8 extension attached. Remove the red cable. Go ahead and do that just so. Go ahead and do that right now. Sorry. Again, my battery is disconnected. When you're doing this install, you're going to want to uh, go ahead and make sure everything or just the battery mainly is disconnected before you go ahead and do anything else just as a cautionary always good to be safe it lifts up just like that okay next install the red wire from the harness pos positioning the loop around the terminal where the red wire sits there it is you're going to want to take the red cable and reinstall the nut after done so, use the ratchet to tighten down the cable. Exercise caution not to over tighten the nut. Just, just a precautionary. Alrighty, secure the red harness cable to the OEM cable approximately three inches from the terminal. You can route the remainder of the wire between the battery and the fuse box, like so. Um, next, you're gonna wanna go ahead and reinstall the cover of the fuse box. And I did actually zip tie right here and right here where the bracket was, just so nothing dangles loose around in the in the bay. And again, re reinstall the fuse cover box. Alrighty, after you've installed the uh, the cover of the fuse box, go, you're gonna want to go ahead and install the brown cable of the harness to the battery's negative terminal. Lift up the battery cover and route the brown cable from the harness to the negative terminal terminal of the battery. After doing that, you're going to want to go ahead and resecure it with a 10 millimeter socket with a 3 8 ratchet and a 3 8 extension. To remove the nut from the terminal bolt, once the bolt is removed, route the wire and thread the bolt through the wire loop. To the, uh, then proceed to tighten down the nut. Be careful not to over tighten the nut as it may result in damage. To, uh, to your connector. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Here's the, the brown wiring harness and the negative terminal of the battery. So go ahead and completely unbolt it like so. Just like so. Again, careful not to over tighten the nut as they may result in damage to your connector. Go ahead and reconnect it, and that's it. After tightening the nut, proceed to secure the brown uh, harness wire to the OEM wire that connects to the negative terminal. You can go ahead and use the zip tie and secure it about three inches away from the 90 degree link in the brown OEM wire. There's your 90 degree. Place it more loose. Just like so. Next up, we're going to be running the fog light wires to the front bumper. We're going to go ahead and be removing the front grill using a T25 Torx, uh, Torx driver. Remove the four bolts that hold the upper front grill in place. We have one right here, one right here, third, and a fourth. quick
okay? After removing the bolts, you're going to want to gently pry on the grill from the top downward. To remove it, use caution when pulling as you do not want to break the retaining clips of the grill. Just like so. Careful not to scratch anything. <laughs> there we go. This is a badgeless grill, by the way. 100% custom. Two grills combined with the Hexus Kiwi Green Vinyl Wrap. Next up, you're going to want to route the two yellow wires around the right side of the fuse box. And then go ahead and tuck the wire neatly behind the headlight. Just like so. Routed them behind the fuse box. Right on underneath and then we're going to go ahead and route them underneath back up through here and then we'll continue on alrighty now route the yellow wires through the opening between the mounting bracket for the grill and the driver's side headlight like so I already went ahead and did it comes in right through here right underneath it's a tight fit but it's doable then um, you're going to uh, went ahead and wrap this there is a rubber piece over this bolt normally like so just like that just like that um, remove it and route the wires as um, as shown just wrap it wrap it around this wire I'm trying to do things with one hand make sure it's nice and tight just like that nice and tight the wires can wrap around the headlight bolt and then you, uh, the rubber piece can be reinstalled and then you're going to want to go around the bumper support downwards and bring the wires back up on the other side because you're going to be routing it through one of these little holes and then one of the yellow wires is going to be routed to these fog lights or this fog lamp and the other is going to be routed to this other side alrighty now the wires now the wires are tucked behind the bumper support and have a clear accessible path to the driver's side and passenger side headlight. Um, next up is to remove both outer grills and you can go ahead and even remove the lower middle grill if you'd like. It's a bit tougher to get at, you just gotta really yank it and go at it but it's not necessary but you can go ahead and um, do that if you'd like. Next steps are going to be we're going to be removing both outer grills and the middle grill. I already went ahead and did that and I already routed the wires to both sides already. There's really no need to remove the the middle grill, the lower middle grill, but if you want, you can go ahead and do so if it makes you feel any better. With all that done, it's time to position the fog light wires. There are two separate yellow wires. Um, one that goes to each side and one is one that is shorter than the other the shorter wire gets routed to the driver's side of the, the driver's side fog light and the longer of the two gets routed to the passenger side fog light um, we can start with the driver's side if you want go ahead and run both wires to the driver's side fog opening once once that's done, I don't know if you can see it, but both of them are routed to to the driver's side, and then I ran the the passenger yellow yellow wire all the way um, through this right behind this middle grill. So right right behind it, you can't see it through it. It's a little bit lower, or more like like right here. Um, once once that's done. Um, run both wires to the driver's side fog light opening then take the longer wire and run it along with the metal bumper support to the other side um, once that's done so secure the passenger side wire to the metal bracket holding the horn you can go ahead and use a zip tie to ensure that the, the wire is snug I'll go ahead and do that right now alrighty I just went ahead and secured the passenger side wire to the metal bracket holding the horn Went ahead and use a zip tie. If you can see it right there, there's the horn. I um, went ahead and zip tied the brown and yellow wire. 
once that's all done, on either side of the radiator, um, there's a T27 torque screw. This screw is visible when the side grills are off and it's easily identifiable due to the fact that it is on the same bracket with the two frame bolts. This is where we will mount the brown ground wire for each of you, the fog lights. Try to get it on camera. It's it's yeah, it's right here. I'm gonna go ahead and try to zoom in when I edit this, but it, it's this one. Once that's done, um, actually to remove it, you're gonna want to go ahead and use your three ratchet and your T27 torque socket to remove the bolt. In order to get a clean ground, you must remove the paint from the bracket. Go ahead and use a rough grit sandpaper sand down the paint from the bracket where it surrounds the bolt do this until the uh, until exposed metal is clearly visible repeat these steps for both sides next reinstall the bolt with the loop attached to it do this for both sides as well again here's the bolt with the loop attach this to the radiator it's going to basically bolt up right there right behind it after you've um, sand gritted it after securing the wires, go ahead and retighten the bolts. And now it's time to install the fog lights. And we'll go ahead and get to that right now. Alrighty, after securing the wires and retightening the bolt, it's time to install the fog lights. You can start by um, connecting the fog light to the harness plug, like so. I don't know if you can go, go ahead and see where I wired up the brown wires to the 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 ground the ground points do this for both sides once that's done um, go ahead and position the fog light into the housing into the housing insert the side with the clips first and then using a T25 Torx driver twist the screw in to secure them in place. So I can see, as you can see, these little tabs right here slide into these, and then it bolts up right there. Just go ahead and do that right now, like so. Lines up perfectly. Get one of your bolts, and bolt it in. Oops. Alrighty. After that's done, we're now in the, the finalization stages. It is now time to install the fog light inserts and, uh, and reinstall, reinstall the grills. So basically run your fingers along the perimeter of the lower middle grill when it installing to make sure it snaps in completely. If you did go ahead and remove the lower middle grill. Next install the fog light inserts. First line up the outer edge and work your way towards the middle grill. Once again make sure all the clips are snapped in by pushing along the whole perimeter of the inserts. So from the very corner, snap, snap. Make sure all these clips clip in over, just like so. Make sure they all click. And then once that's done, go ahead and reinstall the top grill by pushing the bottom clips in. And then reinstalling the four screws at the top using your T25 Torx driver to, install, uh, to ensure that the grill is secure. Once that's done, that finalizes the install kit for a fog light kit for a Mark VI Jetta, the wiring harness, the fog, fog lamps, fog light grills. This wiring harness was supplied by ECS Tuning. Um, I noticed that they did a revision in the one I re recently received, one of my the fuse portion of the the wiring harness on my previous one melted completely this part uh, they used a cheaper plastic I'm assuming 
and I guess just over time I mean the fog light still worked correctly functioned normally but I just noticed it started melting I didn't want anything bad to happen so I actually emailed them told them what happened sent over pictures they were more than glad to send out a replacement pair all you have to do is just pay shipping both ways and you're good to go honestly I mean and um, once you're finished installing go ahead and make sure that they do work double check double check and they do in fact work go ahead and wire up both sides and you're good to go